What's up YouTube, Oliver here. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing an app called AstroPad. AstroPad is an app which lets you use an iPad uh, basically like you would use a Wacom graphics tablet. So you can use this with any iPad if you're using the standard version of the app and you can use it with any Mac. Um, and basically there's two versions of the app, there's the standard and the studio. The standard version of the app is around about $30 to purchase, it's a one-off payment. That works with any iPad and any stylus, but it does have some less features, it doesn't do pressure sensitivity. Um, there is a more professional version of the app which is called Studio, and that's a monthly subscription, which is around about $80 a year or um, around about $12 a month. That does give a lot of extra features, and specifically, it's designed to work with the iPad Pro and Apple Pencil. It does use a lot of the Apple Pencil's uh, pressure sensitivity features and does allow you to get some really good um, fine-tuned controls, which is excellent for professionals. Um, so I have been sent a promotional subscription uh, courtesy of AstroPad to be able to make this video to the studio version, so I'm going to be uh, demonstrating that a little bit later on in the video. You can see on this graphic a detailed comparison of um, the features between the standard and the studio version. You can probably decide um, which one you feel would be better for you. For most people, the standard version probably is the better option, but if you do have an iPad Pro and Apple Pencil, and you do want to have some of those advanced features, um, particularly if you would use this a lot professionally, then maybe the studio would be the right option. They do offer educational and enterprise pricing options, and I think uh, basically the main use of this is it isn't necessarily, I would say, better than a mouse. It's just a lot quicker. It's not that you can't do what you can do on a graphics tablet with a mouse. It's just it is a lot quicker and a lot more accurate. So for professionals, even if it saves 30 seconds, if you're going to do a quick selection, you know, that does make a big difference. In my examples, I am using some brush-based tools, but you do, you could use it with anything that you find that it works with. So let's have a quick look at the software and have a look at the demonstration. Okay, so uh, firstly, let's have a look at what happens when you open the application. So if you open the application on both the iPad and on the Mac, you would be presented with a screen that looks like this. So on the Mac side of things, it just basically has some settings here. You can adjust preferences, allow connections by Wi-Fi and so on. Um, you can check for updates that way. You do have um, options to adjust the zoom. You can only do 100%, 200% full screen. So 100% is the size of the iPad screen. Full screen is the size of the Mac screen. It doesn't actually give you any options to change the aspect ratio. You can adjust the size simply by resizing this box here, by grabbing any of the handles and resizing. However, um, what is slightly disappointing is there's no way to adjust, as far as I'm aware, the aspect ratio of the window. It has to be the same aspect ratio as the iPad screen. So let's have a look at the iPad now. So when you come into the iPad app, basically you can just see the overview of my iMac desktop as I set it up using the viewfinder. And what we'll do is we'll just have a look at the settings here. So you've got this little scroll wheel. It's a bit like what you might find on a Wacom Intuos or Cintiq. First thing you get presented with is the um, studio workspace. I'm just going to quickly open up Photoshop here. So if we open up Photoshop, you can see that the workspace sidebar changes to incorporate the fact that we're now using Photoshop and it'll show whichever application is currently open. And all it basically does is it gives you some easy to get to tools. You can edit these shortcuts. You can rearrange them, change up the look like, and separate this. And if you add a shortcut or you want to edit a shortcut, a similar window to this appears, you can enter a display name, and they're based on keyboard shortcuts. So you just enter the keystrokes. You also get tap shortcuts. So if you tap with two or three fingers, you can set those to do appropriate things. You can use the keyboard. An on screen keyboard comes up, and I do like this keyboard layout. You get quick keys, which basically you can move these anywhere. They're move and zoom. So you can adjust the size of the window or zoom in if you wanted to. You can also press 100% full screen if you wanted to use those. What you can do when you're just in the ring mode is you can hold on the ring and just adjust it that way. So go back into the ring. If we go back to Etsy Studio, workspace is what I was just in before. However, um, if I have a look at some of the other settings, we've got pencil and stroke. Magic Gestures general settings, so pencil and stroke lets you just choose the line preview colour. All that means is when you use a brush as a sort of trail so you can see where it's being drawn and you can choose the colour 
make that differently in preview length you can choose to show or hide the cursor and adjust pressure settings magic gestures means if you're using the pencil at the same time as say putting one finger on the screen it'll hover rather than actually do a click right mouse button two fingers and you can also you know customize those and so on tap gestures similar sort of thing as we discussed before general settings just quick things you can change whether you want display resolutions color settings and keyboard options obviously move and zoom which you just saw there's just something that you know, explains your wi-fi connection and then learn and support basically manuals and so on application guys so basically that's all the settings and all of the options that you can use within the astropad ipad app we'll now have a look at some examples i'm just going to do some examples in photoshop Okay, so I'm just going to do a couple of quick examples just to demonstrate how you use this. And, you know, just bear in mind, this isn't going to be a sort of in-depth Photoshop tutorial as such. It's just, you know, showing you some of the tools that you can use with a graphics tablet, you know, like AstroPad. Um, so let's have a quick look. So the first thing I've got here, I've got this image of a parrot. So let's say you want to use a selection. Now, uh, although there are different ways of doing selections, what you'll find is that a graphics tablet is more suited to brush-based tools, anything that sort of uses the brush engine. You know, it's quite fiddly if you're going to use something, say, like a pen tool, because of the way that anchor points and tangent handles work. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this quick selection tool here. Coming over to the graphics tablet now, what we're going to do is just try and remove the background from this parrot. So there's a couple of areas, for example, the beak and a couple of issues underneath the sort of neck feathers, if you like. So what we're going to do is I'm going to zoom in on that area and I'm just going to use two fingers, which you can just use on the graphics tablet. Let's have a look. So I'm going to line this up and I am going to use the lasso tool here. And I'm going to just make sure it's set to add to selection and I'm just going to go around and this is where the graphics tablet really comes in because you can get that accuracy. And let's just quickly set the zoom back. Um, as you can see we've got quite a nice selection going on there so I'm just going to show you how this works. So. Just going to invert the selection and create a layer mask and you can see it gets rid of the background of course it's not perfect but i'm just doing it quick for this video now if we move over to my second example here we've got some electricity pylons in the background now that isn't ideal in this nice nature shot so i'm going to try and get rid of those so let's just quickly do a zoom right so i'm going to zoom into the appropriate area of the picture and we're going to select the um, spot healing brush tool and Let's get rid of the pylons and those um, electricity lines. Okay, so let's say we're happy with that. Let's zoom back out. And again, you know, we've used that brush tool very quick and we've basically just um, it's quick and accurate and we're getting rid of those uh, power lines and electricity pylons. Um, another thing you might want to do is you might want to add um, a layer mask to, for example, add selective uh, adjustments. So to show how you do that, what we're firstly going to do is make a selection of the sky. Again, quick selection tool, probably the best. quite quickly select the sky like that. I know this is a really rough selection. And then all we can do is let's just add um, let's just add a human saturation adjustment layer and it applies just to the layer mask. We add a bit of tint to the sky, make it look a bit like it was later at night or we add a nice bit of purple in there or something just to change up the colour. Obviously it's just a very quick and rough example but it's just to show you brush based tools that you could use with a graphics tablet. Well thanks for watching. 
Um, my examples, as I mentioned, did use uh, Adobe Photoshop. However, you could use it in other software. You could use it in Illustrator. Um, I have also seen cases of it being used with um, something like Final Cut Pro 10 because it does give you a lot of fine-tuned uh, control over things like moving the um, timeline around and uh, selecting portions of clips. But uh, I suppose it's one of those things. You can get a free trial of the studio version and maybe it's something worth um, having a look at and see whether it's something that could help improve um, your workspace. I should just point out that my voice has sounded a little bit throaty at any point during the video. I have actually got a bit of a cold at the moment, so hopefully that hasn't caused too many problems. Well, thanks for watching this video. If you like this video and you'd like to see more like this soon, please do subscribe, thumbs up the video, and leave a comment if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.